Okay, so we're talking about multiple genders. Uh, typically, a culture will have multiple genders. It's, it's pretty common. Uh, five usually uh, would include men who uh, have male bodies, ma uh, men who have female bodies, women who have uh, female bodies, women who have male bodies, uh, and then people who, are, who don't fit either one. Intersex is a, is a more technical term referring to people who have um, indeterminate um, um, bodies, neither male nor female, or both male and female. Uh, making gender, how real people do real things. Uh, race, uh, race is a biocultural construction. Race is a myth. There's no scientific for, uh, support for the old, quote-unquote, races of man, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, negroid and caucasoid and all that nonsense. Uh, th th it's just, it doesn't exist. Um, when we talk about genetic variation, it's greatest in Southern Africa. Um, there are, 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 are three distinct genetic groups in Southern Africa, and a fourth in the rest of Africa, and a fifth for everyone else on the planet. Uh, when you're talking just genetic variation. Uh, variations in skin color, hair texture, and facial shape are not linked at all. Um, you know, people can have curly hair and light skin, or, or, or straight hair and dark skin. It, it's, uh, they're, they're independent. Um, race does, does exist as a social category, though. So uh, to say that race is a, a, a cultural construction doesn't mean it's, it's not real. It's a real thing. Um, there are other cultural constructions like money uh, or like power <laughs> that are completely cultural constructions uh, and, and rule our lives. Um, so, so just because race is a cultural construction doesn't mean it's not real. Uh, it is very real. Um, it is a, a social category based on physical appearance. It is the interpretation of physical appearance, but that's not genetic. Uh, your physical uh, 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 appearance uh, may not reflect your genotype, right? We have the genotype, which is what your um, DNA codes for, and then we have the phenotype, which is what gets expressed. And so uh, um, because we have dominant genes and recessive genes, sometimes uh, what we see uh, uh, on the outside doesn't reflect what's on the inside. So that's why we say it's not a, it's not a genetic thing, what you look like. It's, 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 it's a much more sort of uh, 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 um, random and, uh, and, 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 and culturally determined uh, to, to, to a certain extent, how you are read um, by uh, the people around you, uh, how, you how that appearance is read. It's going to change wherever you go. Um, maybe, you know, it, it is very possible that it changes depending on different contexts because it's a social category. Goodness. Uh, so slavery created race to facilitate inequality. Slavery, uh, uh, you know, America didn't used to be so, um, so much determined by, uh, racial, uh, uh, constructions. Um, however, because we had slavery and we had, um, um, white settlers, uh, distinguishing themselves and being distinguished um, by black slaves, um, then that created uh, racial distinction in, in really complicated ways in the United States. And this was done in order to facilitate inequality. Sustained inequality has reproduced race biologically and economically. So today you find extreme differences in wealth, uh, in health care, etc., between white and black, for example. Um, that doesn't have to be there. People, people aren't that different. Um, it's, a, it's a social reality that's been created due to um, years and years and years, decades uh, with, with slavery, with redlining from the 1930s to the 1970s, continuing educational disparities, implicit bias of all kinds of people, uh, expecting people, uh, uh, black people to behave in certain ways, uh, and then um, reacting um, uh, according to that uh, expectation rather than their actual behavior. Uh, again, we have beliefs, behaviors, and structures. We have beliefs about how people are going to act, and then we behave, for example, pulling out a gun and shooting them uh, instead of uh, just uh, uh, sort of letting them continue to jog or whatever. Uh, and then that, that produces these structures, the prison industrial complex or educational uh, uh, prison to, to school to prison uh, pipeline or whatever, um, that, that is institutionalized racism, racism without racist. So we can have people who are not racist people um, at all, you know, people who are thoughtful and kind to everyone. Um, but uh, because of these structures that have been built up, um, 
uh, it just reproduces the, 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 the negative outcomes for non-whites in this country. Moving on to superstructure, a superstructure morality being ethical makes you human. Um, oh, I wanted to uh, 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 reinforce the, the idea that sex gender is a composite. Remember that one there? Uh, sex and gender is a composite uh, of six components. That's important. I don't know if I did that before. Uh, superstructure. <clears throat> morality, uh, being ethical makes you human. Is there something like an ethical uh, universal morality? Uh, uh, maybe we can say that uh, just to harm is wrong. It's bad to hurt people. Uh, that's sort of a, a, a universal. Uh, human nature and political presuppositions. Uh, human hunter-gatherers are actually peaceful. Uh, harm is wrong and kindness is better. Um, we have uh, natural tendencies among hunter-gatherers toward empathy, altruism, justice. Uh, uh, there is cultural variation, however. Uh, there are three basic values of autonomy, community, and divinity. And so uh, depending on your culture, you may tend more toward um, you know, what is morally right is what leads to autonomy, that is freedom, uh, or what is morally right is what leads toward community, that is social solidarity, people looking out for one another, um, uh, autonomy being uh, uh, people uh, being free to make their own decisions. Um, and then the third one, uh, uh, people may say that, you know, basic uh, morality is, is toward divinity, toward being more holy, or toward defending holiness, uh, the holiness of God. Uh, against uh, threats. Unlike most human beings around the planet uh, and throughout time, Americans are weird. Uh, and so, and this is important. Uh, this is important to remember this one. Uh, Americans are Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. So we live in a society that is Western, um, that is educated, highly educated, uh, that is industrialized. Um, so the economy is, is, is you know, is, is based on cash, uh, uh, incomes, and um, um, professional training, and productivity, and all that. It is rich. Uh, Americans are 10 times above the global average for wealth. Um, and then uh, it's democratic, so Americans can influence their um, um, government in ways that most people can't around the world. Uh, foundation of morality and emotions, we have intuitive, uh, in, instead of belief, it may just be uh, emotion, As in, instead of reason, emotion. Uh, so we have an intuitive response of disgust, uh, and then we discuss, we, we justify that disgust uh, through reasoning out why we felt that way. Uh, basically, there's two contrasts here in America, utopian liberals versus tragic conservatives. The American uh, uh, utopian liberals believe that humans are basically good and laws can be unjust. Uh, the tragic conservatives believe that humans are basically evil and laws keep us from our natural chaos. Uh, so laws are good things. Um, dynamics of culture. Uh, looking for the cool, always trying to figure out what is cool. <clears throat> Symbols are uh, not totally controlled by the user or by the interpreter. Uh, Symbols are intersubjective. They are, they are created, uh, the meaning is created in a shared fashion between the person using the symbol uh, uh, and the person uh, interpreting the symbol. A taste and distinction. Uh, we have three different forms of capital. Economic capital, which is money. Social capital, which is friends or social networks. And cultural capital. This is the knowledge of cool. What is cool? What is good? What is right? What is the, the, the best thing to do and to buy especially? So there's a cycle of cool. Uh, there is a, 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 a need to stay on top of what uh, you know. What's cool? What was cool uh, last week is uh, not going to be cool next week. So you got to keep on top of it. Uh, why we hate? Uh, we hate on things that we think are uncool because we're trying to establish ourselves as competent judges of cool. Um, everyone worships something unconsciously. There are four functions of religion. Uh, there's a cosmological function, a sociological function pedagogical function and a mystical function. So the cosmological function of religion is to provide meaning uh, to the world. The uh, sociological function of religion is to provide rules uh, for people to follow. The pedagogical function of religion is to pre uh, preserve and pass on wisdom from earlier generations. 
and the mystical function of religion is to provide access to deeper realities, deeper experiences and meanings. Uh, we have different worldviews around the world. Belief, uh, this focus on belief is a uniquely Christian or Abrahamic concern, um, especially uh, Christian and Islamic. These are the two biggest religions for belief. Um, many, many other religions, maybe even most other religions, don't have this emphasis on belief, that if you've stopped believing uh, in the faith, uh, that you're no longer a member of the religion. I'm going to stop here and come back, do one more video, and then we're done.